Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave on the land of the free and the home of the You may be seated. I would like to thank the Tulsa Honor Guard and Detective uh, Reggie Warren uh, for singing the national anthem for us. <laughs> so it is my pleasure to introduce our hosting Chief of Police of the Tulsa Police Department, Chief Wendell Franklin. Chief Franklin is a lifelong Tulsa resident. He's grown up um, in the Tulsa Police Department and he has been a great partner uh, with PSP since Tulsa started with us in 2018. When you speak of the chief, his commitment to law enforcement, his commitment to his city, and his department is evident in everything that he has done here for the Tulsa community. So please join me in welcoming Chief Will Wendell Franklin. Thank you. They've got a little step here for short people. I wonder who that's for. <laughs> well, welcome to Tulsa. Um, this is an amazing sight to see so many faces and colleagues from around the United States. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this city. This city has a lot to offer. It is rich in history. It, uh, it, it has some of the greatest food. Uh, so definitely get out and enjoy the food. and. Uh, and enjoy one another's company. It's uh, nice to see so many people that are here for one reason, and that is to instill safety in our community. Um, when I first took on this role, took this job, and was accepted as chief, I told the citizens there is no way that I could do this job alone. And so uh, that is evidenced by the number of people in this room because it takes everyone working together in collaboration in order to solve some of the tough issues that our cities have. Um, it's not just you all sitting here, but also the people that are within the police department that, that also help do that. And uh, I have had so much support internally and, and uh, uh, tackling that. Now, a couple things I want you to know about our city is, uh, I know 
You won't find any dirt roads in the city. I don't believe you will. Uh, we do actually have vehicles, cars, and uh, most people drive pickup trucks. Yes, there's a lot of pickup trucks. If you get to certain areas of our city, yes, you will see cows, ducks, chickens, and everything else on a farm. Uh, so that's the diversity that is within this city. Uh, but you will also see a lot of rich history within this city as we sit on uh, the reservations of the Muscogee Creek Nation and the Cherokee Nation. You will also find us delving a little bit into the Osage uh, County into the Osage Nation as well. Um, one other um, noteworthy but black eye to the city is uh, Black Wall Street or the Greenwood District. Uh, you're not very far from it. Uh, you are not very far from an atrocity that took place in 1921. And so uh, there is uh, lots, of, lots of historic um, things to commemorate that. I hope you are able to get out and see some of that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? You know, I think for many of us over the past two years, this has been a totally different uh, vibe that we've had to experience. Uh, politics have polarized this, uh, this role that we all play. And uh, like it or not, you know, politics are always going, going to be intertwined with uh, law enforcement. But uh, throughout that, there has been a lot of chiefs come and go. Uh, but there's also a lot of resiliency that resides. And so what I do is I know that my time here is, is a short time compared to the long history of this department. So what my goal is, is to position this department in the best way that I can for the future and leave that to the next chief of police to, uh, to come in and fill that role. So I, I, I'm pretty sure we all think that way. Uh, PSP is a great platform to do that. And uh, PSP has been a wonderful uh, addition to our department and has helped us in tackling some of the technology um, and crime issues that, that we have here in Tulsa. Um, I wanted this conference here for a couple of reasons. I wanted our officers to see just how supportive and just what it takes um, to actually do police work in the United States. That it is well beyond just them and the uniform um, in their patrol car, that there is a whole supportive staff around them that, uh, that's there to, to help them along. And that's what this room is. So I wanted the conference here for that reason. Uh, the second reason is that I also wanted to showcase Tulsa and let you all see what Tulsa has to offer. So I hope that uh, your experience here is uh, incredible. I hope that I am raising the bar for <laughs> the next conference or, or summit that, uh, that will come. And uh, I am so thrilled to have everyone in the city. If there is anything that you need, uh, always find the blue uniform. They are more than happy to help you. Uh, navigate the city, find something to eat, whatever, whatever you need. Um, also, these are not characters. The people that you see are citizens out there. They really are that nice. So feel free. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to, uh, to inquire with them as well uh, because uh, this is a very nice city, a very friendly city, and a very safe city. And uh, I could not have done this job without all of you. And I certainly could not do this job without uh, the man sitting next to me uh, who just so happens to have hired me as the 40th chief of police for the city of Tulsa uh, and him being the 40th mayor for the city of Tulsa. Um, he has been steadfast in his support for law enforcement uh, he has allowed me to tackle whatever it is I need and uh, has left the politics out of it. He handles that. I handle the, the public safety. And so it's great to have a mayor like that. And so without further ado, I'd like to welcome the mayor of the city of Tulsa, Mayor G.T. Bynum.
<laughs> well, uh, Chief and I have a bit of a mutual admiration society going. Uh, it, it, his career is remarkable, starting out uh, as a rookie officer here in the Tulsa Police Department, really engaging in community policing before elected officials like me knew what community policing was. Uh, and then he became our chief of police a whopping six weeks before the COVID pandemic came to town and has led our department through probably the greatest public health emergency that's ever faced our city, uh, through an economic recession, through civil unrest, through a polar vortex, which we did not even know that was a thing until we got hit with one in Tulsa, uh, through uh, tornadoes, and we're, I believe, we're the largest city to ever be hit with an effective cyber attack. And so welcome to Tulsa, <laughs> by the way. We got all that stuff out of the way before you came to town. Uh, but Chief has just been a rock through all of that. He's an extraordinary leader of our police department. And, uh, and probably the greatest challenge of all of those that we face is the murder of one of our beloved sergeants and the near murder of a rookie officer. And through all of those challenges, you know, you always look for what, what's the silver lining in all of these horrible things that are happening. And I think the thing that came forward the most to me, that said the most about our community, was how this city loves law enforcement and the men and women in the Tulsa Police Department in particular. And in a, an era when there is a challenging national dialogue around law enforcement and how law enforcement does its job, it has been powerful to see the support that this community has for the men and women who risk their lives every day to protect us. So I really want to thank Chief and, and all the folks in the Tulsa Police Department who are here today. Um, I also love this program. Uh, this program, the National Public Safety Partnership, is having a huge impact on our city right now as you're sitting here. Uh, so we are dealing with, as a city, what I think a lot of other cities are dealing with, which is the challenge of finding people who want to go into the law enforcement career today, when there's never been more scrutiny on the job. Uh, I, as a mayor, you know, elected officials, we get lots of scrutiny, but we don't strap a camera to our chest and go and deal with the most challenging situations in our city every single day with an open record available for everything that we do on that camera. And so it is when you find people who are willing to go into the law enforcement career, what I find is you have to find extraordinary people. And every city in America right now is trying to find those extraordinary people. We are all competing to bring them in to our communities to help protect our citizens. So one of the great challenges is you have to do more with the force that you have can't just rely on building up manpower over and over and over again as we have been as a city. And so Chief first introduced me to the National Public Safety Partnership in the context of us needing to have a real-time information center. Sometime, some cities call it a real-time crime center. Uh, and in a, a city in Oklahoma, there are going to be lots of questions about law enforcement utilizing cameras to monitor people. And one of the great things that this program did is it took myself and the Dean of our City Council with Chief out to Las Vegas to see a kind of best practice of the, the uh, real-time information center that the Las Vegas PD uses. And that was a turning point, I think, for law enforcement in our city. Uh, we came back convinced of the value of that, that you can have 21st century technology that allows victims of crime to receive help, whether or not somebody calls 911, whether there's a witness or not. And you can make more informed decisions and provide officers in the field with a more accurate assessment of what's going on on the ground, and not just somebody who's panicked and calling 911 and relaying that, which is what we have been relying on in Tulsa for the, about 80 years now. And when we announced, the city council and I announced in April that we were going to fund the establishment of a real-time information center thanks to the National Public Safety Partnership guiding us through every step of that process, 
Our officers told me this is going to be the biggest change in policing in Tulsa since we put radios in cars. So uh, we are, and it passed, by the way, overwhelmingly on our council to implement it because we had the best practices to bring to the table to show thanks to the National Public Safety Partnership. See a lot of folks sitting up here who represent partnership, by the way. As Chief mentioned, we do not do law enforcement here alone in Tulsa. Not only do we have great partners in the United States government, the great United States attorney here in Tulsa, we have a great district attorney here in Tulsa, but through not just through the United States government and the state government, we also partner with our tribal nations uh, who are sovereign governments. And to, to have all of those overlapping levels of law enforcement governance and work together takes a great partnership. So I, I just want to use this opportunity to thank each of them for the work that they do to make our city a safer place. And I want to thank all of you for what you do to make America a safer country. Uh, I do have to put a plug in while you're here. Anybody watch Tulsa King? <laughs> all right. Three people. Great. <laughs> and me. So there's four of us. <laughs> You're just like two blocks from the Mayo Hotel where Sylvester Stallone supposedly lives on the show. Triangle Coffee, where he likes to go get a cup of coffees right down the street. For everybody else, you're just a few blocks away from the greatest public park gift ever given to an American city, the Gathering Place, which is on the shore of the Arkansas River. It's won pretty much every international architectural award there is. It was just opened in the last three years. Uh, you are just a few blocks from USA BMX's National Arena and Hall of Fame. If there are any BMX bike racing fans here, you're also about two blocks away from the Bob Dylan Center, Bob Dylan's archive. Uh, which is housed here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because his hero is Woody Guthrie, who is from Oklahoma, and the Woody Guthrie Center is right next door to the Bob Dylan Center. So if you have time to check those out, uh, folks love to see them there, some of the things that we have to offer here as a city. But most of all, on behalf of all 400,000 of my fellow Tulsans, I just want to thank you for the work that you do and welcome you to our city. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief Franklin and Mayor Bynum. Now it's my pleasure to introduce, oh, that's really tall. <laughs> now, it's my, now it's my pleasure to introduce my director, uh, Carlton Moore from BJA. Director Moore was appointed by President Biden in February of 2022. Thank you, Moore. Thank you, Christy the shortest introduction I've ever had. <laughs> it is so, so good to be here. You know, it's great to walk into a room and you can, you can really feel the energy. And I think uh, the young man who sang the national anthem, I mean, what an incredible rendition. I don't know about some of you, but I'm sure there are a few of you who, like me, every time you hear the national anthem, you just want to get up and hit somebody, right? Because maybe you played, you know, I played football, and so I played a lot of other sports. I probably should have led with the football part, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it is great to be here, and great to be in this room with all of you. Great to see so many familiar faces. So thank you all for being here. And thank you, Mayor Bynum, Chief Franklin, U.S. Attorney Johnson, and the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the Cherokee and Muscogee Nations for hosting this National Public Safety Partnership Summit and for welcoming us so warmly. We are especially excited to be here in Tulsa and to be here in person. It's great to see everyone in person and know everyone is dressed up, just not from the neck up, right? <laughs> This is our largest summit to date, and I want to welcome our 2019 PSP site teams from Anchorage, Alaska, Baltimore, Maryland, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Cleveland, Ohio, <laughs> Davenport, Iowa, and Wichita, Kansas. I also want to welcome the 2021 sites from Antioch, California, 
Aurora, Colorado, Charleston and North Charleston, South Carolina, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Gary, Indiana, Louisville, Kentucky, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Phoenix, Arizona, Richmond, Virginia, and Shreveport, Louisiana. We also want to extend our congratulations and warm welcome to the newly announced 2022 sites. I'm just going to announce list here while I'm up here for a little bit. Albuquerque, New Mexico, Greensboro, North Carolina, Rochester, New York, Sacramento, California, Tucson, Arizona, and Washington, D.C. Thank you all for being here. I also want to welcome our National Law Enforcement Association representatives. James Smallwood from the FOP, Josh Bronson from the International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators, Jim Masano from the IACP, Jason Olin from Major City Chiefs Association, Megan Nolan from the Major County Sheriffs of America, Kim Craven from the National Association of Women Law Enforcement Executives, Frank Russo from the National District Attorneys Association, Dwayne Crawford from Noble, Jonathan Thompson from NSA, and Nancy Demi from the Police Executive Research Forum. Thank you all for being here as well. You know, this is the first time that we have invited non-PSP sites to this event. But I know having you all here will enable us to continue to improve this initiative. Your willingness to observe over the course of the next three days and share your expertise will be invaluable to us as we continue our work on developing and implementing effective crime reduction initiatives for the field. From here on, we hope to harness the promise of PSP to support the broader law enforcement community. Through the hard work of Kristen Mahoney, hey Kristen, <laughs> Cornelia Sigworth, and Christy Brackens, and many other BJA and DOJ colleagues, we have put together an exciting agenda. We listen closely to your priorities and your challenges, and we try to develop a summit that will exceed your expectations of PSP. This is customized for you. And you will have work to do, in case no one told you. You're going to do a lot of work over the next couple of days and the coming years to enhance your crime fighting capacity, to modernize operations, to make new friends, to improve your community of practice, and ultimately, ultimately, to reduce violence in your communities. It is a carefully crafted journey, once, one which is very reliant on all of us being here together. In developing the content of this summit, we have attempted to cover everything from research to relationships. And our breakout sessions feature important topics, such as addressing gun violence, community violence initiatives, crime analysis, and strategic planning. There will be practical discussions of what's working in PSP sites that you may be able to apply to your approach and to reducing violent crime. And we have built in plenty of opportunities for everyone to network together. You know, I can't imagine how much work Tulsa has put into today's summit. And so I just want to thank them and show my appreciation and our appreciation to the city of Tulsa. Thank you. You know, every year since 2017, with a couple of exceptions, including a small pandemic, PSP sites have volunteered to host the PSP Summit. And I think it is one of the really unique things about PSP. From Detroit to Little Rock, Memphis and Birmingham, we have been welcomed by these cities and have enjoyed seeing firsthand how PSP has had a positive impact on their work. We are so proud to support Tulsa and all of the cities that are with us today. 
Each PSP site represented here today understands the strategic collaboration and sharing of resources among federal, state, local, and tribal law enforcement and prosecutorial leadership are the best path towards reducing crime. PSP is a bridge to local and state, federal and tribal responses, not just the OJP grant resources, but all the DOJ resources. That's one of the foundational concepts behind PSP that brings together the law enforcement and programmatic resources within DOJ, including ATF, FBI, the Executive Office of the United States Attorney, the COPS Office, OJP, the Office on Violence Against Women, the U.S. Attorneys associated with each PSP site, the DEA, and the Marshal Service to support cities in their violent crime reduction and community engagement efforts. So thank you, Director Dettelbach, Principal Deputy Administrator Milioni, Deputy Director Abate, and Director Davis for your agency's unwavering support of the program since its inception as a pilot in 2014. The, su the success we have seen across the now 50 sites we have worked in would not have been possible without your agencies. Working collaboratively, we can provide communities, we can provide safe and resilient neighborhoods, and it is working. Here in Tulsa, for example, the, the police department's solve rate for deadly crimes ranks among the top five in the United States. In 2021, Tulsa had 62 homicides. Only five, only five of those cases remain unsolved. The Tulsa Police Department's Homicide Unit has had a 94% solve rate over the last two years. The national solve rate, according to the FBI, in 2019 was 61%. I know there are a lot of you out there who want to know how Tulsa did it, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but you're going to hear a little bit about that later. As part of our increased focus on crime analysis, 16 sites established or improved their crime analysis units. PSP sites have hired over 30 crime analysts during their tenure with the program and created crime analysis supervisor positions to help focus and guide those efforts. PSP provides additional support by providing new and existing crime analysts with training through PSP. Over 80 individuals have been trained in crime analysis techniques, including basic to advanced topics such as social networking analysis. Just over a dozen PSP sites now conduct sophisticated social network analyses, which are used to inform, inform their data-driven violent crime reduction strategies. With an improved understanding of their crime problems, PSP sites are implementing more focused and targeted strategic plans to address gun violence. PSP has helped 17 sites establish and develop real-time crime centers to improve their awareness and immediate responses to gun violence. Following recommendations from PSP, 21 sites have restructured or otherwise modified their detective and investigative units to better focus on non-fatal shootings, homicides, and other violent crimes. In April 2021, the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department started the Violence Reduction Team and the Violent Crime Task Force. And it shifted 90 officers into these two teams to focus on gun violence, specifically shots fired and call and fire, I'm sorry, specifically shots fired calls and getting illegal firearms off the street. When these two teams were established, they experienced several shots fired per day. And now they have many days without any shots fired at all. 
And in January of 2022, these two teams confiscated 120 illegal firearms. PSP has helped three sites establish family justice centers where victims of crime can go to receive support services. And it has helped three other sites create or improve their victim service units. PSP partners are also collaborating to improve the prosecution of violent crimes. Three sites have restructured to implement vertical prosecution of violent crimes. And 10 sites, 10 sites have developed a violent crime, violent crime or gun crime case review process to collaboratively identify which venue, local, state, or federal, to pursue prosecution. And BJA and ATF have had a long-standing working relationship in assisting the field to implement the technology and build business practices to develop crime gun intelligence. Through our grant program for local law enforcement, since 2016, we have invested a total of 41 $0.7 million in crime gun intelligence centers. To date, we have been able to provide funding to 46 jurisdictions, and that number will continue to grow because I am pleased to announce the Crime Gun Intelligence Center solicitation is posted today. And we will be seeking applications for our next round of new crime gun intelligence centers. Ultimately, PSP is about learning from outside experts and each other as you build a comprehensive violence reduction strategy. Perhaps Chief Murphy Paul, Chief Murphy Paul of Baton, of Baton Rouge, Louisiana Police Department recently said it best. As leaders, I believe we all see value in bringing in outside subject matter experts to assist in strategic planning. The reality of local politics can sometimes interfere in collaborative efforts. The value of having PSP leadership facilitate the strategic planning process not only minimize local political influence, PSP presented a safe space for all stakeholders to feel comfortable and engaged. PSP is an investment in your communities, in your fellow residents, in their public safety, and in a safer future for your jurisdictions. You have come here for two days to leverage all that PSP has to offer to bring that safer future about. By integrating these resources into your local strategies so that you can move the needle in the right direction. PSP is here to serve as a force multiplier for the good work you are already doing. PSP is also here to support your agencies and your, and your officers as each of you go out every day to engage and serve your community. We recognize the commitment you make to stand on America's front line, and we appreciate your sacrifice. You know, there is an old African proverb, and it says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. We have come so far together, and I am so excited to know how far we will go. And we will go far because we will do it together. Thank you very much. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General of the Office of Justice Programs, Ms. Amy L. Solomon. Amy was appointed by Attorney General Merrick Garland in May 2021. She leads the Department of Justice's principal funding research and statistical component, overseeing about $5 billion annually. I don't have your short bio, I just want you to know. <laughs> Okay. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> well,
Well, you saved me from having to read that you're from the University of Michigan, so I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Good morning. This is an incredible room to join, and I am so pleased to be here. Um, I'm so excited to hear firsthand so many of the stories from PSP successes here in Tulsa and around the country. Couldn't be more pleased to be here, and I really want to thank our local hosts for having us here and hosting this summit. I can already tell it's going to be one to beat. It's an honor to join Carlton, Deputy Attorney General Monaco, U.S. Attorney Johnson, and leaders here in Tulsa and throughout the nation, uh, leaders throughout the nation. I'm so happy to be here today and so encouraged to see this strong collective commitment to the safety of America's communities. We have seen how this commitment is playing out in PSP sites across the country. You've just heard some of those successes. Many of the sites are seeing drops in violent crime, dramatic in some cases, clearance rates for homicide are up in many cities, gun tracing and ballistic an analysis is more efficient and effective, and law enforcement is working more closely with victims and setting up family justice centers. These successes and others like them are possible because of concerned and engaged leaders like you who are putting your finger on the problem, designing thoughtful and strategic solutions and doing what you need to get the job done. The National Public Safety Partnership has helped jurisdictions large and small meet the most pressing challenges, your most specific pressing challenges in your areas. And I'm so proud of the job that Carlton and the team at the Bureau of Justice Assistance have done to lead this vital initiative. I'm also pleased that so many of components of the department are here to add their strategic uh, resources uh, to this effort, which is really designed to strengthen communities to help build the bonds of trust and deliver on the promise of public safety and equal justice that are among the first responsibilities of government. I'm excited about the, what this initiative has already accomplished, and I'm so optimistic about what's possible. So I just want to commend you for all the hard work and dedication, what's been and what's to come, and I really look forward to our continued partnership in the coming months. And the real job I've got here is actually to introduce Clint Johnson, who is our next speaker and, of course, our, hope, uh, our host here. Clint Johnson has been leading the department's work to reduce crime and violence in the Northern District of Oklahoma since March of 2021. And he's coming up on a one-year anniversary as his appointment of U.S. Attorney. He is a career federal prosecutor with extensive experience in prosecuting gang, drug, and violent felony cases. He also boasts a distinguished career in the Army's JAG Corps, and we are so grateful for his service to our country. I want to thank him on behalf of the Office of Justice Programs for welcoming us to his district and for the outstanding work that he and his team have done to keep communities in northern Oklahoma safe. So please help me welcome U.S. Attorney Clint Johnson. Good morning. Uh, as Amy said, I'm Clint Johnson. I am your host, U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Oklahoma for this conference. I told you my name again because I want to make sure you guys do not get me confused with Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. That is not me. <laughs> All right. I'm pleased to welcome you to the PSP Violent Crime Reduction Summit, the city of Tulsa, the state of Oklahoma, and the Muscogee and Cherokee Nation. It's a place I'm proud to serve, and it's a place I call home. I want to thank everybody who planned this summit this week. I want you to know that my team is here to help you as well if you have any questions or if you have any need of any assistance. Today we have over 500 U.S. attorneys, Department of Justice leaders, district attorneys, tribal attorney generals, city officials, and importantly, our federal and local law enforcement partners attending this summit. The Public Safety Partnership is a force multiplier. If you are committed, you will see results. And I also want to thank our Justice Department leaders for supporting our law enforcement partners through PSP and for addressing violent crime through the United States, throughout the United States. So welcome to the city of Tulsa. Welcome to the state of Oklahoma. Welcome to the Skogee and Creek Nation. We are glad you are here, and if we can help you in any way, shape, or form, my office would be happy to do that. 
Now on to why, the reason I'm really here. You guys don't want to hear me talk. You came for the big, big dog, right? <laughs> Joining us today is one of those leaders, Justice Department's second in command, the Honorable Lisa Monaco. As the Deputy Attorney General, Ms. Monaco supervises litigating and policy components, federal law enforcement agencies, and 94 U.S. Attorney's offices across the nation. She further assists the Attorney General implementing the Department's priorities. A 16-year veteran of the Department, she began her career as counsel to Attorney General Janet Reno, went on to serve as a United States Attorney in the Washington, D.C., where she was re uh, recognized for her exceptional service as a member of the Enron Task Force. She further served in leadership roles within the Department to include, in part, the Chief of Staff to the, of the FBI and Assistant Attorney General for National Security, the first woman to ever hold that position. Finally, Ms. Monaco served as the Homeland Security and Counterism Advisor to President Obama. She coordinated policy, security responses, and advised the President on all aspects of counterterrorism policy and strategy. Deputy Attorney, Monica, Deputy Attorney General Monaco is a strong supporter of PSP and of reducing violent crime. She's a friend, uh, she's a colleague, and even more importantly, she's my boss. So, <laughs> please join me in welcoming your Deputy Attorney General. Thank you so much, and uh, good morning, Tulsa. Good morning to everyone here. It is great to be here. It's great to be in person, although I will say the one downside of uh, convening and being in person is that I'm actually taller on Zoom. <laughs> so uh, it is really an honor uh, to be here, uh, to be with all of you, and to kick off the National Public Safety Partnership Violent Crime Reduction Summit. I am pleased to be joined this morning by so many leaders in law enforcement, including those of you representing current PSP sites. Uh, I'm especially pleased to be joined by the leaders of the Department of Justice's law enforcement components. I see them all here, and I can't help but think, they usually leave Washington to get away from meetings with me. <laughs> Surprise. It is really great to be here. I want to thank the summit's organizers, particularly uh, the Office of Justice Programs and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, who helped bring all of us here together. Thank you especially to Amy Solomon, to Carlton Moore, um, and for your commitment to the work of the Public Safety Partnership. Thank you especially to our Tulsa hosts, Mayor Bynum and Chief Franklin, Boy, what a spokesman, um, Mayor, you have in uh, Chief Franklin here, a great spokesman for this city. Thank you also to U.S. Attorney Clint Johnson, U.S. Marshal Clayton Johnson, and uh, of course to the Tulsa County District Attorney Steve Kunzweiler, who I understand is squeezing this in before he picks a jury today. So uh, thanks for being here, Steve. Uh, and I'm also really, really grateful to be joined here by Attorney General Jerry Wisner of the Muskogee Creek Nation and Attorney General Sarah Hill of the Cherokee Nation. The presence of so many law enforcement leaders from across the country and so many community leaders from across the country speaks volumes, I think, about the commitment we all share to uniting our experiences, uniting our expertise to joining forces to keep our community safe. The National Public Safety Partnership, or PSP, represents, I think, the best of what we each have to offer. And it represents what we can do together when we approach this mission with unity of purpose and unity of effort. PSP provides our law enforcement partners with better tools, it puts resources where they are needed the most, and it empowers communities to stand together to reduce violent crime. Now, the Department of Justice has no higher priority than keeping America's communities safe. The latest FBI crime statistics make clear, though, that our efforts, especially when it comes to violent crime, remain urgent. Our communities and the law enforcement professionals who serve them face incredibly daunting challenges. We saw a record jump in homicides in 2020, 
and the number of violent crimes is still at an alarmingly high level. And that includes, of course, an epidemic of gun violence that is fueled by illicit trafficking networks. And today, communities, and in particular, our children, are being devastated by a fentanyl crisis, fueled by violent criminal drug cartels. Fentanyl is the deadliest drug threat that we face as a nation. And last year, it contributed to the record number of Americans more than 107,000 who died from drug poisoning and overdose. Today, more than ever, law enforcement is being asked to handle a wide array of challenges while the job itself is getting more dangerous. Last year, 73 officers were murdered while on the job, the highest number since 9-11. It takes a special kind of public servant to get up every morning and put their lives on the line for a stranger. I want to thank each and every one of you who do and the community leaders who support them. Now, our communities and the law enforcement professionals who serve them are safer when they have the tools and the technology to do their jobs. And every jurisdiction, each jurisdiction, large, small, rural, urban, faces unique challenges, and no single jurisdiction can tackle it alone. That's why the Attorney General and I have placed working shoulder to shoulder with our partners in community-driven strategies at the center of our violent crime reduction strategy. Our strategy is built on four pillars. Focusing our enforcement efforts on the most significant drivers of violent crime, including gun violence. Fostering trust with and earning legitimacy in our communities. Investing in community-based prevention and intervention programs. And importantly, measuring the results of all those efforts by impact, by the actual reduction in violence in our communities. Now, by supporting law enforcement operations, increasing interagency coordination, and building trust with communities, the National Public Safety Partnership is an important part of all of these efforts. Across more than 50 sites in communities nationwide, the Justice Department, through PSP, is deploying data-driven, evidence-based strategies tailored to local needs. And that's the key, tailored to local needs. And this past October, as Carlton mentioned, we've added six new sites to this network, Albuquerque, Greensboro, Rochester, Sacramento, Tucson, and Washington, D.C. Across the country, PSP is working with local police departments to engage with criminal justice stakeholders and community partners to address violent crime. And these partnerships are playing a critical role in the Department of Justice's overall mission, upholding the rule of law, protecting civil rights, and keeping the American people safe. As Deputy Attorney General, I have been incredibly fortunate to be able to see this work in action I've visited PSP sites in Chicago, in Newark, New Jersey, in Charleston, South Carolina, and Philadelphia, to name a few. And I've seen the hard work and the promise for communities that these partnerships are yielding. Community members and the leaders that I've spoken to and I've met with have shared how violent crime, and especially gun violence, is ravaging their communities. And law enforcement leaders and cops on the beat have talked about the importance of building trust with the communities that they're serving and the need for critical resources to both combat violent crime, but also its root causes. But I've also heard about the power of the partnerships forged through PSP and the difference that they are making in our communities. In Newark, Community members and law enforcement leaders are building up innovative, community-led strategies to intervene and prevent violent crime 
and to build trust between law enforcement and the community. In Chicago and Philadelphia, law enforcement's using cutting edge technology in coordination with federal partners to identify the most significant drivers of violent crime and to go after them. And in Charleston, PSP is bringing benefits from leveraging law enforcement expertise and pooling it with dedicated prosecutorial resources to, pr to promote public safety. So much of the success of PSP's work relies on a core principle, supporting law enforcement and community partners with the tools they need to deploy data-driven, evidence-based strategies tailored to the local needs. And one of the most important tools that the department can deploy to help our partners combat gun crime and gun violence is the development and use of crime gun intelligence. At more than 25 PSP sites, agencies have enhanced their crime gun intelligence capacity through partnerships with the ATF. And under the leadership of Director Dettelbach, ATF is leading the way in using technology to help our partners combat violent crime and gun violence. And one of the most important tools in that effort and that we have in that regard is the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, or NIBIN. NIBIN provides timely ballistics information in fast-moving investigations, and it's a unique resource that ATF can provide to its partners. Collecting and analyzed fired shell casings and crime guns is at the heart of identifying shooters and solving gun crimes. The intelligence derived from this data can link shootings to each other and to the criminals who commit them, and then take those shooters off the street. NIBIN turns the evidence that law enforcement collects at a crime scene into the ability to identify, investigate, and prosecute violent criminals. The department is committed to helping our partners leverage cutting edge tools like NIBIN to combat violent crime and gun violence, and we are determined to do all we can as federal law enforcement as part of this effort. That's why today I'm announcing a new policy to increase the use of NIBIN. Under this new policy, all firearms and fired cartridge casing, casings recovered in connection with every criminal investigation opened by the Department of Justice, including by department-funded task force operations, must be analyzed and entered into NIBIN. And because time is of the essence in linking crime guns, this policy makes clear that department agents and investigators should strive to enter that ballistics data into NIBIN within 48 hours, but no later than 14 days, unless there's unexpected or extenuating circumstances. So we really want to make sure that we're getting that information in in a timely way so we can make those connections, we can link those guns to those shooters, and we can take them off the streets before they can attack again. PSP is all about providing different jurisdictions with tailored resources and strategies. And here in Tulsa, PSP has developed more effective crime analysis, as you've heard from Carlton, to inform data-driven violent crime reduction strategies. And in addition, it's helped launch a new victim services unit and is incorporating victim advocates into its investigations. And in Tucson and Detroit, PSP sites are joining the Office on Violence Against Women strategy for preventing domestic violence killings by reducing perpetrators' access to guns. And across the country, PSP is using cutting edge technology and training to deliver innovative solutions to the field. PSP's Virtual Academy is providing online training to thousands of officers from dozens of agencies. It's making the best of federal law enforcement training available to our partners, state, local, tribal, all across the country. At the end of the day, PSP is about harnessing what works and expanding it. And it's having tangible results. PSP analysis shows that sites are seeing greater reductions in crime the longer they're engaged in PSP. 
Across the country, sites are implementing new strategies, engaging communities, opening lines of communication, fostering partnerships. Now, we all know these efforts require real and significant resources. And I'm here to say that Congress has the opportunity to provide those critical resources, the ones we need in our communities to support these efforts and those of our state and local partners. And the Attorney General and I are determined to fight for these investments. That's why the President's budget for 2023 includes a request for the Justice Department for almost $11.2 billion to tackle violent crime. This includes more than a billion dollars in new investments in reducing gun violence and violent crime, and investments of $3 billion in programs like PSP that help communities tackle violent crime. We are going to continue fighting to make sure we have the resources that we need to support the partnerships that we so value and that are so critical to this mission. The National Public Safety Partnership reflects our commitment to ensure that those of you who are on the front lines have access to the resources, the information, the tools, and the experts to do the job. Thank you for your partnership and for all you do day in and day out to fulfill our shared mission of keeping our community safe. Thank you very, very much. Deputy Attorney Monaco, thank you for your insight and for sharing the department's priorities and your focus on violent crime. I know I speak for everybody here how we appreciate the fact that you traveled to Tulsa, the state of Oklahoma, and to Indian Country with your very, very busy schedule. So once again, thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you again, Deputy Attorney General Monaco and U.S. Attorney Johnson. At this time, I would invite our current panel to depart the Diaz and the press to depart as well. Uh, there will be a press event in Promenade A, which is one level up the escalator. And if everyone else can remain seated. Thank you. <laughs> 